So this is going to be a quick introduction to the Fedora Badges sysadmin point of view. So there's been the design workshops for the last several years, but this is the first time we've done a sysadmin overview for the Fedora Badges side. So we're going to try to do a quick overview of what that technology behind the Fedora Badges infrastructure is, give an overview about some of the automatic badges, and then explain the workflow. And then our goal is to, tr at the end of this, is to try to uh, actually try to have everyone push badges based off of the tickets that we have in the Peugeot preferences that are in a ready to push status. Uh, so this is the quick agenda, is basically what I just explained. Uh, and Cyan was going to, oh, and this is an anti-agenda, but since I guess you're in the room, anyone that wants to design the badges, there is the Fedora Badges Design Workshop tomorrow, uh, 9 a.m. to 10.50. So. I will hand it over to, for, to Cyan for the technical overview. <laughs> Do the wiggle. Hi, uh, I'm Cyan, and I'll go through the technical overview of it. So, um, so before starting off with creating the badges, it's better to know like which projects make up the Fedora badges project in whole. So, uh, we have a uh, Fed message, we have data normal, uh, we have Fed badges, Tahri and Tahri API, and Sometimes for debugging we use data gripper. So that's the last point as a maybe data gripper. And so let's go quickly through uh, Fed message and data normal. So this is a simple diagram. So within the Fedora infrastructure we have a virtual bus which we call as Fedora uh, Fed message, which is a federated message bus. Uh, if you can see this is like a virtual message bus that we have and then various applications uh, push messages to the uh, fed message bus, um, be it like Koji or um, um, Bodhi, Peggy or Kemets, Bodhi, all push uh, messages to this particular message bus. And this works on a published subscribe model, so different application again can connect to either subscribe model to this bus and can start receiving those messages. And uh, each message has a particular topic to it. So using that topic as a filter, they can start using or subscribe to a particular topic and start receiving those messages. So uh, so badges also lies on this front. So we have uh, badges rules which listen to a particular topic. And um, based on that, they filter out like which person should get which badge. And we have different rule set of which Miro would be explaining uh, ahead. Uh, anyway, so we have, uh, so here you can see like Fed badges is one of the component as a subscribers which post uh, the data into the Postgres. So uh, now moving ahead, we have a data normal. So what's data normal? So data normal is a database where Fed messages uh, stores all its messages. So Fed data normal is also a Fed message hub uh, which listens to a particular. Uh, message so it actually uh, listens to all the messages and stores it into a database next and uh, yeah so next part is the major part is the fed badges so fed badges is a project which is like the rule generator so it converts the rules file the rules yaml file that we create into a proper sql query and then awards the badges as it goes forward so this is a s Sim sample uh, rules file that we have I picked up from the documentation so uh, you have the topic so for any to uh, fed message message which has this particular topic so this rule file will pick up that particular uh, message and then we have the criteria on how to filter those messages from the data normal so you have like uh, filter the topic and then uh, from the message, it tries to pull the message dot commit dot username, which is the uh, person who actually gets that particular badge. And then you can do various operations based on uh, that. Like suppose we, you need a badge like where the commits are greater than fifty, uh, sorry, greater than ninety. So you can put all those conditions in the YAML file. Yep. Uh, okay. Do you want to show this particular? Right. Okay. 
so this is a data grip uh, data gripper ui so data gripper is uh, primarily a api J a rest api kind of a layer on top of a data norma so if you need to pull data from the data norma database you have uh, to query them via the data gripper so uh, can I, uh, justin can you click one of the json messages so right now we are filtering based on the get uh, receive uh, messages so you can see this is the message structure to that particular message and if you can see uh, there is a message commit and username uh, like a dictionary so we uh, try to filter out that particular uh, username so here uh, we from data now so when fed badges does the uh, ruling part so it would filter out the username and award the badge to this particular user if all the con conditions are met Yes, that message dot comment dot username. Okay, uh, go on to the slides. The next that uh, thing comes in place is the Tarid API. So Tarid API is primarily the so the badges front end that you see is primarily divided into two parts, which is the Tarid uh, project, which is the front end to it, and the Tarid API. So Tarid API have all the models in place which uh, defines the database structure so um, the uh, so it also provides with a api layer over the database so if you need to create user or award a badge or uh, create a series in the badges so you can actually use that particular api from tarid api to do all the operations so primarily ta the tarid project actually uses that api to create all the operations on the uh, database, Tari database. So, uh, so primarily it's a database. It uses SQL Alchemy, and it's written in Python. And uh, as I told, like it uh, provides the API over the Tari API database. Next, and finally we have the project Tari. It is a pyramid uh, Python uh, pyramid based project, which is a Python web framework. And uh, it's basically the front end to badges.federalproject.org. So whatever you see, the admin page or the explore page or any other page that you see. So it's basically the all the codes lies in the Tari repository. And um, if you want to like uh, contribute or add new features or probably update the templates on in the badges project, so Tari is the place where the code would be. Okay. Sure. Uh, sure. So, uh, probably we can show a code if we can. Uh, so, ta so Justin asked the question like if I can give give an example for Tarid API. So, Tarid API like as in like you if you open the go to GitHub Tarid API. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so uh, you have a file called the DB API within Tari API, so which contains an extraction of like uh, all the database uh, operations that we need to expose out. So, like as I told, it can be cr a create a, a simple user or create award someone a badge. So all is done via this particular uh, API. Go to Tarid API. Uh, yes, and DB API. Yes. Uh, just increase the font a bit. Yeah. Just scroll down. Scroll. Uh, scroll down. Yeah. So, uh, so if you see, there, there are various methods, utility methods like team exist, uh, get team, or uh, uh, scroll down like create team so all these are like the API endpoints or the methods that can you use so basically the basically the Tahrir actually uses these methods to interact with the database it does not do it directly via the SQL alchemy and even the I guess the edit badge or all the badges uh, scripts that we have 
those also uses this all API methods because uh, this is like it's you need to create a, D a DB session and then start accessing using these methods. So next, Miro would be taking over to explain the automatic badges. Hello. So we already seen an example before. Uh, so just a little repetition. Uh, we have some trigger, which is something that will basically it's cheap it doesn't take much time and every time there is a fed message this the rest of the file will only be applied if the trigger matches but it it's not very powerful you can basically filter by topics maybe some lambdas like here uh, but you can't uh, see history you only in the trigger you can only filter the particular fed message they sorry I don't know how, how it real time or not uh, this works, but so basically uh, the fed badges thing is hooked up on the message bus, and every time it receives a message, it goes through all the rules and uh, applies all the all the triggers. So it's almost real time. It might take some time because we have a lot of rules and a lot of, a lot of messages, and I don't know how fast is the machine. So sometimes you do an action, and it takes a couple of minutes before you receive the badge. Uh, yes, you're right. So, but but we need we have badges that say something like, uh, "You did something five times already," or or something else. So, we first do the trigger part, and then the criteria can look to the data number, which is basically like a recorded history of all our uh, things that happen in the fed uh, message bus, including a short period before message bus was actually created so when 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 this was when this started in 2013 i guess they uh, kind of looked at the database and they reconstructed partial history for data numbers so there are even more historical data but not all of them and then you can uh, look to data number and find another messages with the same topic and with the same user and then you can do some operations like count or there are more i don't remember them all there is no real documentation for this, as long as I know. Uh, bit of it, yeah. So the, the, the workflow usually is you find a badge is, which is similar to this one, you copy-paste the rule file, and you try to make it work, which sometimes is possible and sometimes it is not. But that's a little problematic thing. So what you could do is uh, search the topics on the data number, try to find something which is related to the the stuff you try to create and then see the JSON of the fed message and uh, figure out what's in there. So for example, we have, have been having troubles with the Pajure commits badges. So there is a lot of badges for uh, committing into Pajure IO uh, project, like one commit, five commits, 20 commits, 100 commits, but they have never been averted because the file doesn't work and nobody knows how to write it properly because uh, the batch says commit, but you can't have a fed message on commit because you commit on your machine. You can only push to git, and then the fed message contains all the commits in that very push, and it's almost impossible or nobody knows how to write that properly. So the issue with the peg your badge is uh, you have uh, you do the commits and then you create a PR or like uh, if there's a big issue that you're working on there would be multiple authors to that particular commit so uh, but uh, fed message message only contains the uh, name of the or the fast ID of the person who actually merged the PR and the total number of commits it never lists all the authors in the PR or how many numbers of commit they did in that particular PR. So that's the issue. Uh, the earlier API had the functionality to uh, do that and the right the current batch rule is uh, written uh, on like using that earlier API. So after the API migrated we, st uh, s we started getting all these errors and we don't know how to fix this.
So I'm going to spend a little bit of time covering the workflow so we can actually get started trying to push some badges. So if on your personal machines or uh, anywhere else you can load these up, this is what I would call the like sysadmin Fedora badges toolbox. The things that you need, like minimum viable uh, items you need in your toolbox. Like we were talking about before, all of the design assets and rule files for Fedora badges lives in this Peugeot repository. So this is where all the design work happens, but this is also where all the design assets live that eventually are synchronized over to the badges backend server. Yeah, oh, and if, if you can get on it on the conference Wi-Fi. We'll, we'll figure something out, if not. But the other one, this is uh, what I would say is like the, def the definitive guide or standard operating procedure for actually pushing and uh, managing the infrastructure side of the badges. This is, I would say, like if you're ever confused about a step or if you're here in this workshop and later you want to try to remember some of the things we covered, this is the, the best place to look and understand the process. Uh, and the last part is the badges website front end, uh, which if you haven't used it already, we'll explain a little bit from the admin point of view for using that towards the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do a quick run through of the, of the uh, SOP up here really quick, just to run through what that process looks like. Uh, and anyone is welcome to stop me at any time. So I'm not going to talk about the description because that's kind of the technical overview that Cyan and Miro gave earlier. I'm going to cut straight to the chase on pushing new badges. So, and I can zoom in on this so it's not as, not hurting your eyes as much either. Um, where's my mouse? So, pushing a badge always consists of two operations. When you're doing this, you are going to be pushing the badge assets, which are the, the PNG files, the SVGs created by the Fedora design team in the issues in that Peugeot repository. Uh, and then it's actually adding the badge to the badges website front end. And there is an intermediary step for how you get the design assets from the Fedora badges to the uh, badges front end, but I'll explain that in a little. Uh, so the way it works is that anyone with write permissions can push to the Peugeot repository, but because everything is now in a Peugeot repository, this can actually just be done with pull request workflows. So even if you are, don't have direct commit access to the project, or uh, you don't have sysadmin rights to, you can actually jump in and get involved and even do the work. Like if, there's a, if you see a ticket that has ready to push status in the Fedora badges repository, anyone can actually just jump in and make a pull request to start closing that ticket and pushing out the design assets. Um, so when you're getting ready to create a badge, uh, from the sysadmin point of view, there's always a few things that we want to check for. Uh, one thing that's not covered here that I do want to add in is from the sysadmin side, whenever a new badge is being proposed and if it has an automatic badge rule, it's always a good step to make sure that whatever is being proposed, whatever is being suggested, is actually technically feasible. In the same way that Miro mentioned earlier that it's, there's a fair set of limitations on what kind of automatic badge rules we can push. Uh, we need to be mindful of what we can actually push out and have as an automatic badge rule. I, w I would like to to see also, which I think I talked to, I think I mentioned it to you or someone uh, yesterday, is that there's a step before that we need, we should add a step, kind of going along with what you're saying now, um, before the design team designs the badge that a badges admin says, yeah, we're going to do this or exactly. not. Yeah. Um, both because some badges are not currently technically possible or things like we've had come up with event badges where we're not going to make, generally not making multiple badges for the same event except for Flock. Right. And the design people are nice people. We don't like to waste their time. Yeah, because so I... That's I, why... We 
I always why we're ha- trying to. I hate I hate closing tickets that they've already made art and saying sorry we're not going to use it. I I would rather say we're not going to make that badge so don't spend your time designing it. So when a new badge issue is made, we should put review on it or like developer review or a tag that means that it needs to be reviewed by you guys. And then like I'll keep artwork needed off of it until that time comes. I I think that I think that would be good. No. Well, for manual ones, too, because there's some like event badges where someone will put in a ticket like we had the ticket for fleece all organizer. But and it already got art made, and then we're like, no, we're not, we're not making that badge because there's because of our general not making multiple badges because most of the people getting the organizer badge, or well, most of the people with the attendee badge are also getting, we're also proposed for the organizer badge, so I'd like to have that conversation badges. separately. <laughs> okay. I mean. So looking back at the steps, so that was just one thing I wanted to add in because that's not currently mentioned in this document. So I just wanted to put that in the beginning. For the rest of this, the work begins once the artwork actually reaches, is is given the final sign off approval by a design team member. From that point, from the sysadmin view, we're wanting to make sure that what we're going to be pushing up is clear. So the name and description of the badge that are, are being pushed uh, and if you're not familiar with the badge site, this will be you know, the badge title and the little description hover text that goes along with it after it's pushed. Uh, and after that, ensure that one of the requirements are met, that for a manually awarded badge, like an event badge, you know what FAST accounts are going to receive the privileges to award it and to make the QR codes and design or to, or to award the badge. Or if it's an automatic one, that it has a YAML file with the rule uh, already created. Uh, so once you've kind of done that, the, the checks to make sure everything is all set and ready to go, um, and if it's not, just comment on the issue and remove the data push tag, you're going to actually add the badge assets to Pajor. So the way this works, um, and like Nick mentioned earlier, if you have your laptop open, you can try to navigate to the Fedora badges repository on Peugeot and clone that down because uh, it is there's a lot of design assets in there as well and we'll be using a little bit to push the badges um, so you'll take in the issue the way the workflow is right now the design team will create the design assets and upload them as an attachment into the issue t- or into the ticket for a badge so what we do is we'll, we'll take the artwork, the SVG and the PNG, and the YAML, if, if there is one. Uh, we'll make sure that whatever artwork we do, that we grab, is actually valid and correct and looks, cor- and looks right. Because example, like sometimes we grabbed a PNG and the file was corrupt because of something on our end. And sometimes it's been that the SVG was rendered correctly, uh, but the PNG is like slightly off center. Or there was some minor trivial exporting issue. So it's just, it's just good to take a look at it before you go and start pushing this up. Uh, so the other thing is once you have them downloaded, you'll put them into the Git repository. You'll see in the repository there's the PNGs, SVG, and rules directories. Uh, just a good rule of thumb is make sure that all the files you're putting in for both YAML, PNG, SVG are all the same root file name just to keep things sane. Uh, and we used, there is some functionality that exists to create STL files for Fedora badges, so you can like chuck it into a 3D printer and get a pretty cool Fedora badge out of it. It's not perfect. They're not really clean. If you're a 3D printer uh, ho- hobbyist, they're not really amazing quality, but it's still pretty decent for just having a script that creates them on the fly. But because they're pretty big files, we create them only on request if someone is actually asking for them. Uh, and there's more information in the actual, in the bin directory on how to do this. There's a n- nice bash script that will run through this. So, how to make the 3D badges 
nicer or easier. So currently the, the script is really uh, dirty because you don't have any actual data except colors and 3D printing usually is without colors. So we turn it into grayscale and then we do a height map of the colors, which doesn't really good look good. So what you could do is to create uh, another version of the SVG where uh, only three shades of colors would be used or four. And that would make it easier to print either color badges or because it's easy to print like four colors but you don't print in true color or something or 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 you use the color information for for height so you see like there is a badger so let's make him plastic a little bit uh, make it uh, i don't know darker on the nose and lighter on the edge of the face or something like that we don't do that so if the badger is white it will be flat and then there will be black eyes and the black eyes will either be holes or peaks i don't remember so it's ugly but if you if you use the color not to represent color but to represent height uh, and has another SVG file, it can be easily turned into 3D batch. Um, so which uh, denotes which? So if it's lighter, then it's flatter, and if it's darker, then it's going to be like a taller height. Either that or the other way around. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, if we ever want to do that again, we should figure it out. But we but that's something we could totally do like put in a separate ticket or reopen the ticket and say, hey, we want this 3D printed. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that either. Uh, so going back into the workflow, uh, just keep that in mind for the 3D printing for at, the, at least how things are right now. Script that does have some of the caveats we mentioned here. Once you have all the files in the right place in the directories, the PNG, SVG, YAML rule file, you will commit the files and push them to the Fedora Badges repository or just make a pull request for these files. Uh, just rule of thumb on these is just make sure that they have sane names. There's not really a documented, like, you need to name your files this way, but you'll see, like, if you look into the repository, all the ba there's some badges that are awarded when you are added to a Fedora account system group. And all of those are named, like, fast, dash, group name. So just try to follow best precedent when you see it. Try not to re It just makes things easier to find if we're looking for different kinds of badges. Uh, so just use your, use your best judgment for what to name the file. Uh, so this is the intermediary step I mentioned earlier. So you push the badges into Pajor, you m merge the files in, now what happens? So once everything is in the master branch of the repo, you're going to need to move them from the Peugeot repository to the badges backend server. And this is done via an Ansible playbook that will take the Peugeot or clone the Peugeot repository and put them into the badges backend and then restart the server so the files are present on the machine. Uh, so this is currently, to, to do this, you have to be a member of the sysadmin uh, badges fast group, which has a prereq of the sysadmin uh, fast group as well. So for this one, you can generally just ping a member of the uh, a current member of the sysadmin badges group, or ask an infrastructure member to run this playbook, the uh, push badges playbook. Uh, so this one doesn't really apply if you're not, or isn't really that helpful if you're not in the fast group. But it's helpful to understand that this is the this is the intermediary step. This is the infrastructure portion of actually taking those design assets and moving them to the badges backend. So then you can actually interact with, or so that they're present on the, uh, on the badges.fedoraproject.org website. So I'm just kind of going to skip through this one really quick. But uh, so there's, like we mentioned earlier, there's the two kinds of badges that are generated. There's the automatic badges and there's the manually awarded badges. And they have two different ways of being created. The automatic badges are actually, I think, easier because you can just do it in the Peugeot repository. And when the Ansible playbook runs, it will create the badge when the badge's backend is restarted. The reason why this happens is because, like you saw earlier, the automatic badges have a rule file. What you didn't see in the screenshots and the examples earlier is there's actually an entire section that has like the name, the description, the uh, original discussion, the original issue for the badge. Uh, and you can specify those in the YAML rule file. So 
when you're making a, a pull request or a commit to the Peugeot or to the Fedora badges repository, you also have all that info in the YAML file. So when you you know push it into the repo, run the Ansible playbook, the server restarts, the Tarir front end creates the badge on that restart. So you don't have to do anything except go to the badge on the front end and add tags. That's the only manual step you have to do if it's an automatic badge. If it's not an automatic badge, you have to do a few more steps. Uh, I think I can just show this kind of really quick, what that front end looks like for the badges site, um, if I'm signed in. Yeah, so this is what the admin portion of it looks like. It's not super intuitive. And but one one like, so one caveat is like if you enter bad information in this front end, it's very hard to correct it, which is why generally I prefer the way of the automatic badges of doing it in the YAML rule file. So let's say the badges. I pushed it to the master branch of the Peugeot repository. The Ansible playbook is run. What do I do now? So there's a section down below for adding a new badge to be awarded. So just like in the YAML rule file, you'll give it the name, image. So this is actually going to be, I think I give an example of the URL string in that doc, but. Uh, the, main th the main thing to be really, really careful about is tags. Yeah, I'll, I'll, oh. I'll, I was just going ex to explain, I'll make sure to explain that one because of the, the categories. Yeah. So. For the front, for the artwork that actually is pushed to the front end, that is generated based on the name of the file of the uh, of the artwork. So that's why again, like the file names, I think are pretty important because it just makes it easier to locate the artwork. So in this case, uh, there's a badge that if you were to go look in the report Peugeot repository right now, uh, you'll find the Comop Superstar badge. Uh, and so after that Ansible playbook runs, if you're going to push a manual badge, you'll find that the artwork for that badge is... Yes. So you'll see that the example of this will be you know, the badges website slash PNGs and then the name of your badge that you push to the Peugeot repository. So after that Ansible playbook runs, you can actually take that artwork and you'll have to go and double check, you know, go to that URL, make sure that it's there, it looks right. You'll, you'll copy that and you'll put it into the Tarir front end in this slot. So you're actually putting a, 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 full, a fully valid URL into that field. Uh, the description is just the hover text that pops up on the badge. Criteria, so it, there is the little uh, subtext there, but like the issue where the badge was discussed or uh, created by the design team, the issue link is what goes in that field, which gives us a point of reference if we need to look back on the history of when a badge was created, or we need to, you know, maybe a rule is broken, we need to update it. We can look back and see where the original discussion was and make adjustments if needed. Uh, issuer. That one, just leave as the default. I think it, that is the only option, so you don't have to worry about it. And tags, and this is exactly what Nick was talking about earlier. Um, so tags are a little bit tricky. So the way Tarir works is there, in the Tarir application, you can specify a set of tags that will display on the main application page, or the main page of the badges website. So I'll show you on if we go to look at some of the badges here, go, let's go explore, explore, and pull this up. Uh, you'll see, if we go to the badge index, there are the content badges, there are the development badges, the community badges, and the qual quality badges, and then event badges, and miscellaneous after that. So I'm just going to open one of these ones up. We'll look at the Flock 2018 badge, just to see how that one was done. So with these five categories, these five tags, those are special tags. So the way the we do things now, every badge, I, and you might have noticed, actually, with all of those, each group, each of those special tags had like a frame, like had different colored borders on the badges, had different colored backgrounds. That's actually part of the design uh, 
yeah, the design scheme for the badges. So a badge will only ever have one of those tags. And it's important it only has one of those tags. So you don't have a content and community badge because then it will show up in both of those parts of the, of the web application. But if you look a little closer, and let me zoom in on this so you can actually see it. So for the Flock 2018 badge, you have three tags here. Ooh, should be, should be two. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is, again, why it's not the cleanest thing. It's actually the events tag that is the correct tag that will make it show up in that front end web application under the badge or the events category. Uh, but you'll also see it has other tags that are helpful just for sorting purposes, like tag. And I could find another badge that has some. So like, for example, for an event badge, if it's like a LATAM event, I'll give it like event, maybe the name of the event, Fleesall, and then I'll give it a LATAM tag. So then you can go and like look at all the badges for LATAM events or for all past Fleesalls or so on and so forth. But because of the fact that all those groups on the front are just special tags, you have to be careful about what you fill in uh, in that tags field on the badges site. So once you've done all that, you've put all that information in there, you hit the add badge button, magic voodoo happens, and the badge will actually end up in that badge index on the front page. Uh, and so at that point, congratulations, you have pushed a new badge. And uh, for the people who are just coming in now, if you want to uh, take a look at some of these links, uh, I would definitely, we're kind of going through the second link right here. So you can pull this up and follow along with the SOP as we're going through it. Uh, all of the action for Fedora badges is happening here. So I just want to give you a chance to pull that up if you're just getting in here. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, there is a little bug, which I probably, I guess I need to file an issue about. Um, if you add the category um, tag when you create a manual badge, it doesn't work. Like if you look, um, try uh, pull up the one that I was working on for the advocates. It shows up as uncategorized. Add, go back later and add the tags. Yes. Don't add the tags when you push the badge or when you create the badge. I guess, yeah. So what, what Nick is saying, so if you forget to add the tags? No, or no, 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 no. Do not add the tags when you create the badge in the web interface. It, there is a bug, and Tareer does not see the category. Oh. So go back and add the tags later. Okay. You so can go to I the follow. you can go to the badge page and if you're an admin you have an option for adding tags and um because for some reason Tareer does not see it if you add the category whenever you create the badge. There's some sort of bug. So Yes. Yeah. So that'll be an action item for us. So just to clarify, uh, there's a field from the app when you're logged in as an administrator where you can go in and add tags to a badge retro in retro or retrospectively. So the best practice for this is actually to do this after the badge is created. I did not know that. So thanks for thanks for specifying that. Um, this I mentioned. I think we kind of ran through this when I was in the Tareer front end, but this is just a reference for the badge metadata. Uh, again, like what all those different fields mean. Um, I did explain all these, so I'm not going to spend too much time other than making sure that if you are in the front end, make sure there's no hanging white space in the description field. <laughs> um, and again, like for the tags, make sure that you're, when you're entering a tag, you're following previous precedent, you're following, uh, trying to avoid creating new tags because it's easy to add new tags, but removing tags is much more difficult and involves SQL query writing magic. Um, so now once you've done all these things, you have taken the issue or the artwork from the, uh, the design assets from the design of the Peugeot Fedora badges issue. You have committed them into the master branch of the repository, the Ansible run, and whether it's an automatic or manual badge, it has been added to the front end 
of the badges application. The final steps is just to start, you know, close out the issue. So you'll go to the original ticket where the badge was discussed. Uh, oh, and before you do this, make it actually looks right. Make sure you go find your badge. Make sure it's tagged correctly. Make sure it's look, it appears in the categories you're expecting it to appear in. The artwork's not wrong. Just do a quick look to make sure everything looks right. If it does, uh, go back to the ticket in the P Fedora Badges Pajure, uh, and you can close it. Or if you're making a pull request as a new contributor, you can say, uh, you know, point to your pull request if you did. Uh, but what we do is we'll go to the issue, we'll close it out as complete, uh, and just best practice is post a link to where you can find that badge after you publish it. So give it the link to the badges.fedoraproject.org. And if it was a manual badge, please list the fast usernames of any users that have authorization credentials for that badge. Uh, and so that's the last step of like the workflow process. Um, I don't think we have to cover the rest of this. This is more the sysadmin scripts. You're welcome to go through this on your, on your own later. But that's kind of the, the quick overview of the actual workflow of how we push badges. So from there, now we actually wanted to give everyone a chance to get hands on. Oh, quick question. So I have to leave in a minute to go to the outreachy showcase. But something I wanted to ask this part of badges is, is there any interest in like redoing the website, maybe making badges a dashboard thing in Fedora? Is there any way to like, I mean, or is there any interest? There? I know there's ways, but is there any interest in kind of updating or improving the UI. the UI for it? Because I just, I think it's a little tired. I think it's a little old. And um, I think maybe we could gain a little more usage and excitement out of it if it didn't look the way that it does. Um, so I just wanted to bring that up and I'd be willing to help from the design side of it. I don't have a ton of experience, but this would give me a chance to get that experience um, in, in building something new there. So, you know, I'd like to hear people's thoughts on that. Uh, yes, yeah, so one of the things is we probably wanted to move this to the Fedora Bootstrap uh, layout uh, to unify it with the other uh, projects that we have in Fedora. But uh, as you see, uh, another thing is, yes, we have a couple of pages we really don't use but then a uh, few things are like if we can uh, first thing is uh, we can like make it similar uh, compliant with the Fedora bootstrap and uh, have a better admin page that would be a very good part and then uh, in general if we can have the profile page a, a bit better with um, a few more data in there so yes there was uh, so right now I talked to a couple of people and they said that if we can, there's like if we can improve the Fedora badges UI and like right now it uh, feels very dull and blocky. So, is there any way to integrate it into Fedora? Like you know, just what you open up. I don't know a dashboard, kind of a maybe a mobile app, but like like opening it up on your computer and maybe you see it as like a notification, like it comes up, pops up, and says. I don't know, like I get like an IRC notification, like this person messaged me. Can you do that? Like you got this badge. Can we get it like more integrated with? Notification. And like maybe like you could pull it up somehow and s and see like all the badges you've earned. Or I, I'm just kind of, yeah, I'm trying to. I just wish that it was a little bit more integrated with like, you know, actually using Fedora. Uh, a quick idea. Since you mentioned the outreach session, and I know the call for mentors is opening up, or has opened, and is in the process of happening, I was thinking it could actually be a really nice, uh, like, outreachy project to have a uh, Fedora, like, to work on the career front end and try to revamp the UI UX. Because I know a lot of we've had a lot of like really great success stories in Fedora with UI UX, like with Fedora hubs, and with um, there's another. Pro uh, I think it was, again, it was the Fedora Android application. But there's been some other ones that I know this has been a very great like, kind of niche for us in Outreachy. So this could be a, like a, a sidebar we could have maybe after this session about trying to combine. Because I think it would be helpful to have the design point of view 
and the development point of view for like a project to work on. So who would be like the mentor for a, you know, UI side of this? I, I can't personally like commit the time to do that yeah. at this point in my life. Yeah. Um, so we would have to find someone willing and maybe like it would have to be a design person and a, a development person together uh, helping that that individual. Yeah. I think if we can try to query around on the, or do you want to add? So uh, Ryan was interested in um, building the, uh, y changing the UI and working on that, but probably he did not get time. So probably we can talk to Ryan on this, like if he is able to mentor someone on this, because he knows the development side and the uh, like design side. So I think you would be a great a great choice for that. Okay, so for all of you that are here now, uh, we're going to try to do some actual pushing, pushing some badges live right now in the remainder of this workshop. Uh, so if you still have the, the toolbox that I mentioned earlier, uh, these links here, we're going to look at the Peugeot repository really quick. So if you go to the, the Issues tab on Peugeot, and you find the ready to push tag. And I'll, I'll zoom in here so it's not as painful to see. Um, but if you go to the ready to push tag, you'll see there's actually a series of badges that are ready to be pushed live uh, to the front end. So now we're going to make this less, you know, less talking and talking speaker audience, and we're going to make this more like a hands on workshop. So anyone that wants to jump in, how this will work is we can kind of divide up some of these tickets that are ready to push. Before she leaves, uh, you said you wanted to talk about like the thing about multiple badgers and stuff for the release. Uh, multiple badgers. Like where is that? Right. Uh, I actually don't think that this is the case. I mean, it might be, but I feel like people would probably want to learn about, I would like to discuss maybe some of the people. Mm -hmm.
what I did recently is when I uh, see a issue for a badge that says ready to push and there is a missing YAML file I remove the ready to push tag because it's not ready to push because it doesn't have a YAML file so what do you actually what is possible to do now is uh, Federal Women's Day 2018 attendee because that's manual Flock 2018 and 17 contributor patches that's also manual could be done here and for the automatic ones you would need to check the rules files which I think is maybe too much for a beginner right now Yeah, fast group should be easy because there are other fast groups, uh, YAMLs. been able to pull down the uh, the GitHub or the Peugeot repository. I know it's kind of a big repo. But so the way I see it, we have three tickets, but actually four badges. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, we have three tickets, but four badges because the flock one is two years, 2018 and 2017. Uh, and we have four people in here who never pushed a badge, if you had never pushed a badge. Okay, so it's going to be mandatory because <laughs> you don't see very enthusiastic about picking a badge. So uh, whoever feels for writing some YAML that will be voluntarily, and if nobody wants it, pretty much just copy pasting it. Yeah. yeah. So who wants to? Yeah, we actually have one person for one person <laughs> so it's gonna be a pair pushing of badges like are you in no okay then uh, one person is already running away so we can do the flock badges uh, as one what about you not really okay so let's just scratch it and go for lunch <laughs> <laughs> I guess is there anything that we would want to try to work through like from like our side as like this admin take some time to sit down and just try to file some issues or make some milestones and things we want to try to work on for the next few months or to try to keep on keep on the agenda if we have no volunteers for actually hands on maybe you can live push something on yeah, the yeah actually, why don't we do that? so do a live push um let's see we can do I guess this one is probably more immediate, right? The flock 2018. I'll do I'll do one that's just a single batch. I'll do the one with the rule file for Fedora Atomic. Um, so I'm coming in on this one. So I see that it's been ready to push. Uh, I just want to get some historical context on this one. So someone will probably need to be awarded manual privileges to award because they have some people who are already in the group. Oh, and there is the um, um, the mapping. Yeah, yeah, you can, do can just do that. Be uh, add them to the award 
little badges. I think I have direct commit to that now. I don't think I have to submit a patch uh, to the mailing list now, so that's helpful. Um, Okay, so this seems pretty straightforward. So they don't have the rule file written, but they have the design assets done. Where are the last design assets? Hmm. This looks like a confused ticket because they yeah. want to make it uh, manually averted, which is something I wouldn't rather do. And Likewise. Yeah. Why don't we just do the Fedora Women Day ticket then? Yeah, I think that'll be a that should straightforward. be straightforward. Yeah. Okay, so this one had the review passed, um, or artwork approved by Marie here. So this one is ready to go. So in this case, I'm just going to grab the, this is the PNG, and the SVG. Oh. One thing I don't like about the GNOME terminal is I can I can zoom in with my keyboard, but I can't actually zoom out with the shortcut. It, the, the shortcut doesn't work for me. I do control, uh, control yeah, control minus and oh, Whoa. never. <laughs> it's been broken for me for a long time. Uh, Fedora, I've got badges, so I always do a git pull before I uh, push a new badge because the odds are I've missed some new badges that have been pushed since I last did a since I last pushed a badge so I always pull down any any last changes since mine uh, or since I've last pushed so you'll probably see there's a bunch of stuff that's gonna get pulled in here I don't know how long this will take with the conference well just a few um, so that's done I'm now on the I'm now on the latest commit for master branch so I'm going to uh, just grab the uh, Noxiously long titles. I'm just going to put them here for a sec. Mm. Uh, so I think the precedent for these is, is actually just going to be the event name. So I can just probably do. Is it, was there a Fedora Woman Day badge last year? Yeah, so I'm just going to. It's a uh, FWD dash attendee. And then there is ah. FWD dash attendee dash 2017. Excellent. So this one. So I'm just going to put the PNG in here. FWD attendee 2018. And the SVG to do the same. FWD attendee 2018. Excellent. Uh, so now that I have them in the right place, oh, and actually, let's make sure that the artwork is actually good because I've done that before where I've grabbed the PNG. Yep, looks like it should. So I have both of the files in Git. Oh, and I have one that shouldn't be there. <laughs> I have a dirty working tree. I didn't realize that. I'm just going to move that one away. Okay. So you'll see I have the two badges, so I'm just going to go ahead and do add uh, Fedora Women's Day 2018 attendee artwork. And since, and now if you don't have access, uh, at this point you would just do a pull request. Uh, you'd have forked the repository, you the best practice would be to create a new branch on your fork repository and then push your changes to that branch. Uh, and then you could go to Peugeot and make the pull request to the Fedora-badges repository. In this case, I'm just going to push directly since I have access and just so we can kind of move things along. So I'm just going to take a second. Oh, sorry, Justin. <laughs> Don't. 
Yeah. Ah. Uh, let's try that one more time. So there was a stay for the recording context. There was a uh, a new commit added upstream while I was I was working on it. So now we have it pushed. It's on the master branch. Uh, if we go to the Peugeot repository, I'm going to close these since we don't need them. Let's see if they're here. So you'll see PNGs, FW or Fedora, FWD. Just to make my life easier. Hey, and there it is, the 2018 edition of this badge. So now that that's done, uh, <laughs> Could one of you do the Ansible playbook run? Because I do not have my 2FA with me. Uh, after my run finishes, I will run it again. We'll see. Okay. Um, so this would be the point where if you're not in the sysadmin badges group, you'd want to uh, drop a ping to one of, like one, any of the four of us in this room, or to, uh, okay. I'll show them the Ansible. Oh, okay, sure. So at this point, you either ask one of like the four of us that you see here in this room. You can just ping us on IRC, or you could go to the Fedora-admin channel on Freenode and just ask uh, the on-call or another member I, of the infrastructure would, team to suggest, run the playbook. I would suggest try to get a hold of one of us. That way, we don't put more on the yeah. sysadmin on-call people. Yeah, but if you don't know who to ask, you can just put. You can just ask the question uh, in Fedora-admin, yeah, and do, one of us should see it there, too. Do uh, dot members uh, sysadmin dash badges, and that will tell you. With Zodbot. Yeah. Oh. Lord help us, I did a <laughs> Cool. OK, so my run, I just ran the push badges because I was pushing I just ran the push badges because I was pushing the flock contributor one. Oh. So our back playbook is a script that's basically a wrapper around Ansible playbook to allow people that are not in sysadmin main to run specified Ansible playbooks, um, which is defined by what fast groups you're in, our back playbook will either allow you to run a, ba a playbook or not allow you to run a playbook. And normally you have to, uh, it'll say, uh, what is it, password plus token or something? Password plus token. Uh, and you type in your fast password and then either a YubiKey that you've configured with Fedora Burn YubiKey or a, a TOTP token that you can set up using Google Authenticator, FreeOTP, or whatever program you prefer. But since I've just done sudo a few minutes ago, it did not prompt for credentials. And you can see what all it says it's doing. And that would be our badge images with the, the yellow text. And there's actually a badge for running a playbook. Yes. Does that work with the RBAC playbook too? Yes. Oh. It's based off a of Fed message, and RBAC playbook publishes Fed message. So all this one is doing in the background is it's just taking the Git repository, cloning it onto the badges backend server. And once it does that, moves everything in the right place, it uh, will restart the badges backend server. Uh, and that's what will make the artwork available to you when you go hit the URL. Uh, I, think it, uh, I think it only restarts the backend server if there are rules. Or no, I guess it doesn't know it if it, there's rules. rules or not. I think, uh, OK, I guess it's for any Git. It doesn't really have to restart that if it's just a, 
SVG or a PNG because those just get shoved there. Okay, so yeah. now so now it shows that everything finished. It even tells you how long it took to do everything. Everything is either okay or changed, which is good. Awesome. Oh. Thank you, Nick. All right. So now, now that's all been done, if you go and take a look at the badges site, it's there. So now I just hit this uh, URL. This is the FWD attendee 2018 URL that we just pushed. So that is now there on the public web that we just pushed live from the Peugeot repository. So that is that that was what just happened here. So since it's a manual badge, like I we were talking about earlier with the manual uh, awarding, I'm going to I'm going to make my life a little easier. I'm just going to mirror these displays. I'm not like craning my neck around. Um, That's a little ugly. Maybe not. Um, so we'll go ahead and if I can get things back up here. OK. So now I'm going to go ahead. I don't think I need to do uh, anything more with the Git repository. So that's been done. I'm going to close this out. So now I'm going to go to the uh, badges front end with the admin interface. So now, from my point of view, I'm going to go and look at this uh, ticket. And so it's Fedora Women's Day 2018 attendee for the badge uh, title. So I'm going to take that and use that for the badge uh, name. Make sure that I don't have any extra white space. Um, I'm going to take the URL that we just pushed, put that into the image field. Uh, description that was also in the badge. You attended a local Fedora Women's Day 2018 event. So I'm going to take that string and put that in there as well. No hanging white space. Uh, criteria that's just going to be the Peugeot Fedora badges repository. I'm going to put that there and I'll add the tags after we add the badge. So now I'm going to push this to the front end and we see. You added a badge with name Fedora Women's Day attendee. So let's go find it. Let's go take a look at this. Helpful there. <laughs> Plus one. All right. So the easiest way, I think, would just be to look, or when I add a badge, I just go and look at the side here that shows all the recent badges. So you will see that here it is listed as an uncategorized badge. So I'm going to go ahead and open that one up, and I want to make sure I get I want to make sure that I get the tag right. It's either event or events, and I want to be I want to be positive. <laughs> um, what's the badge that I know is right? Mm, I think that was mine. So so before I actually I want to look actually I want to look at last year's. Uh, Federal Women's Day event. I want to see what tags it has, so I'll make sure I'm following past precedent for tags. So that way, you know, if you go to find the Fedora Women Day tag for badges, you'll be able to see all of them listed together. I just have to figure out where that ah, 2017 badges. So it was tagged with. Uh, that's 2018. Mm, that one also has both. That's not a good example. So diversity and event were the tags used for last year's badge. So I am just going to do diversity and event. I typed those right, right? Yes. So I'm going to add those tags to the badge and give it a second. And you'll see, ah, there they are, diversity and event. If I look at the diversity tag, you're going to find both Fedora Women's Day badges. And now if I go back to the uh, Explore, or if I go back to the badge index and take a look around, I'll see that now, uh, oh, those are the, I think the ones Nick just added. You'll see that now the Fedora Women's Day badge is listed as an event badge. It's ready to go. 
and is now pushed. But since it is, an, since it is a manually awarded badge, the next step for me would be to go back to the admin interface and give someone the rights to uh, push this badge. So in this case, I know the three fast usernames of the people who are going to need this badge. So I'm going, where you do this is you do create authorization. Oh, why can't I zoom down? So I, you create an authorization. So the badge I is that, and this is mentioned in the, uh, in the documentation. Oh, I closed it. So it's that string in the URL, that's the badge ID that uh, Tahrir recognizes as the, oh, it's Women's Day. I'm glad I checked. Yeah, so it's that string that I'm going to take and go to the Fedora badges front end, put that in as the badge ID, and for the person email, the way that the Fedora or badges.fedoraproject.org works, you have to specify the fast username of the person and then at fedoraproject.org. So I know in this case, the three or four usernames of the people who uh, will have authorization for this. So I just authorized the fast username B2502. And I know there's a few others that need it as well. So I'm going to add them as the. Uh, I'm going to grant them authorization rights as well. And I'll give it to myself so I can actually show. Oops, wrong field. Yeah. So I can actually show what it looks like. What does it, what is it, what is, yeah, I got that typo, yeah. <laughs> and after you get done with that, I have something to show them how to fix a match. Oh, with the scripts? Yes. Yeah. So now, I'm, I, I also awarded this one to me so I can actually show you like what does it mean when you're granting authorization to someone? Like, you're giving them the right to push the badge, but does that mean they have access to the admin interface? Like, what is that doing for them? So they don't have the admin interface, but what it does for them is, so I'm going to go find the Fedora Woman Day badge. Uh, uh, a shortcut, change the URL to slash badge. Slash Explore, badge. yeah. Yeah. Since you already know the badge ID, yeah. you can just... I was just clicking through it. <laughs> so you'll see that uh, this field I now have available to me. So when I go to the actual badge page, I see that I have the option to directly award the badge to someone, and I have the ability to create an invitation. So for that one, uh, so I think this one is pretty self-explanatory. For this one, <laughs> and you actually enter the username of the person on this. You don't enter the email, which is kind of not intuitive. But in this case, you would get, enter the fast username. So I would say, oh, you know, jflory7 gets this badge if I wanted to give it to me. And then I would just click the award directly button. An invitation is pretty neat. So this is the one that maybe you've seen. Like, like you've seen here at Flock, you saw the QR codes uh, that were being used for the attendee badge. So creating an invitation will uh, create a badge with a time period that expires. Uh, so let's say I, I wanted to make this badge have a QR code or have a special link you could claim that was only valid for the next 24 hours. So I would give it a timestamp like uh, 2018, uh, the 11th, and the timestamp, you have to give it a timestamp as well. That's in UTC time zone, just for reference. So this one would be uh, would, uh, would actually be tonight, actually. Um, so that would be uh, August 11th at uh, midnight UTC, this invitation would expire. If I were to create the invitation, it would give me, uh, on my badges profile, my personal profile, it would give me the option to grab a claim URL, like a special magic URL that if anyone goes to, they'll get the badge. And it gives me a QR code that I can just like grab and put into a, a document or a poster if I wanted to print it out. And I think that's just, I, oh, and the last thing I want to do is just go back to this page and say, we push this live in the badges sysadmin workshop flock. The badge is found here. 
So I'll take the URL of the badge, and then I'll say B2502 Yona Tony and J Flory7 have authorization rights. Closing as complete. And closed, pushed, it's no longer ready to push, done. Yay! So, and that's, that's, that's the process of pushing a badge. So, and now Nick is going to show you in the case, this is only of, uh, an option for those, actually in the, in the sysadmin badges fast group, if you need to make edits or changes to a badge. I'll let Nick. Yeah, earlier today I was looking back at some past event badges and I noticed that the Fleasaw 2015 badges were, oh, I guess I should make that larger. Um, the case did not match. Most of them were, the, na the event name was all in uppercase. But then the other badge, but the 2015 were not. So I decided I would standardize that. So I actually was using the edit badge script uh, during the beginning of, the, of this workshop. So, and then I also, whenever I was, which kind of goes along with what Justin was saying, if you are making a badge, be careful what URL you put in because it's not very hard to fix it, but it's easier to do it right the first time. It was a lot harder before we got this these nice scripts. Then you had to get someone to edit it in the database. Now we have edit badge script. So whenever I was creating the Flock 2018 contributor badge, I put criteria, which is a link to the badge's ticket, I put that in criteria and also in image instead of putting the uh, instead of putting the link to the art. So I can just go to user local bin edit badge. I already did I already became root because sysadmin badges has full pseudo access on the badges servers. Dash dash badge uh, flock 2018 contributor and up here you can see where I did dash dash help because I can never remember exactly what the command is because I don't use it too often but it does have help and instead of changing name I will change image and it always gives you an error or a warning you can ignore that but it does say setting image on flock contributor to that. So now if I go back to Oh, wrong year. This is the that was the first one I did and it was right. So now the art works. Um with that script you can change the name, description, criteria, image. Wait, they added tags? Yeah, they ended. Right. Oh, yeah. that must have been recently. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, then we can edit tags now. I did not, cool. I did not realize that you added that because be the last time I took it about tags, someone fixed it in the database. <laughs> okay, so yes, you can change tags now. So does that replace the whole list of tags? Oh, okay. So you just do comma separated list of tags. Oh, okay. Well, great. <laughs> so we can fix up the ones that say event and events even. Okay. I saw those before, but I didn't want to 
anyway. Mess. I didn't mess. Well, yeah, I did not want to mess with changing those because it was not an easy process. But if it's just a script, I'll, I may go through and change them. Um, and we also have a few other scripts. Award badge, which can be done through a script, although usually I do it through the front end. The way, reason it, the way, or situation where it comes in handy to use the script is if there's a big long list of people to manually award a badge, you could script that. Just have a list and make a script that takes a file of usernames or something and just iterates over it and awards the badge. Okay. Which, like, I didn't know how to do that, which is why I was like, oh, wow, like, I wish I would have known about this for like, <laughs> yeah. all the manually awarded event badges that can be badges. There is a delete badge. Um, I already showed edit badge. Um, grant authorization, you can do that from the command line, but usually we do it through the web interface. Uh, and there is a revoke authorization and revoke badge. If a badge is mistakenly awarded to someone, you can remove it. But if you remove it, there is a badge called Consolation Prize that you award them. You award them a badge as an apology for removing their badge. <laughs> and you can revoke authorization if you accidentally award the wrong username. Or maybe, say, some group, the leadership of some team changes and they don't want Justin to be able to award the badge anymore. They want Miro to award the badge. You can remove the authorization from the old person and give it to the new person. Um, I think that's about it with the, with the scripts. So. I think that's all we had planned to cover for today. So I don't know if either of you two have any any questions or any any feedback, but if not, then I think we're all wrapped up here. So thanks for coming out.